All right, so this week on Three Sides of the Coin, obviously we're recording later in the week because we are going to talk about some big kiss news. So we talk about the latest development on the last shows. Are they really the last shows? Who's going to go? Because it's my birthday. <laughs> oh, and... It is brought up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everyone's going to know now. <laughs> It's going to be Lisa's birthday and the last kiss show. <laughs> yeah, hello. They would go hand in hand. I mean, I mean really. Um, so stick around. I changed from a nice shirt to sparkly. So if yeah, she gets all dolled up. If that's not enough, I mean, stick around and see. Now, sadly, we didn't get the watcher. No, I changed. And I checked like ten times to make sure it was off. <laughs> I could <just> imagine. <laughs> You know, I'd be oh, the meme that is that is something go. that is something Lisa would do accidentally is get yes. up, forget to turn off the camera and change clothes right in front okay. on the show. I, I do. I uh, use Zoom a lot for work. And like as long as I carry the computer around, like uh -uh, I'm petrified. I'm constantly checking to make sure that camera's on constantly. It's only me now. So so this week. Yeah. Kiss. Final shows ever. What do we think? What do you this think? Three sides of the coin. Talking all things. Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. And I don't have any comments because I don't have a computer. I have nothing set up at home right now. Well, we didn't count on you having comments anyway. Exactly. So I'm just warning you ahead of time. All right, so welcome to Three Sides, time? people. Yeah, we all haven't been together in a while. No, we haven't. I, was, I wasn't here last week. And by the way, we are recording. Welcome to Three Sides of the Coin. You just heard there's not going to be any comments from Tommy, but we weren't expecting that. Um, I wasn't here last week because I was, uh, I, was liter I was literally on a Ferris wheel puking. If you we can believe that. Expanded. What? You thought you were having your hemorrhoids banded. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Guy, I, I, I have, I mean, it is the funniest and it's just, so we're at Disneyland. I went to Disneyland last week with the family. We took Thule down. It's the first time she's been to Disney. We spent two days in the magic kingdom and one day at Disney's California adventure. Um, and in the California adventure, which is actually turned out to be a pretty cool park gets a bad rap from a lot of people but it's got Lights more up. more rides so why to speak it, like like it why, why it, does it get a bad rap well it's always been a little odd it's not quite the same as a disney okay it's more of an amusement park is what it is huh. it's just got okay. some disney theming built around it but it's much more of an amusement park it's got legit roller coasters and okay. legit twisting and thrill rides and stuff like that so mm. there's a giant i mean i'm sure you've seen it there's a giant ferris wheel in the center of the park giant i mean it's like 150 feet tall or something like that wow. so we we get there and i'm like and i already know i'm past the point of coasters i used to love coasters and spinning rides as a kid but if you don't know as you get older equilibrium changes in everybody's ears as you get older you can't control yep. it and you become much more sensitive to thrill rides like roller coasters and spinning and stuff like that i mean i used to ride valley fair i used to get on the roller coaster jump off of it run around ride it again and you do the tilt the whirls and, yeah everything you know none of that mattered to me well now it's like fuck you know put me on even the smallest ride and i'm like See, but, I can still do the up and down coasters. I just can't do the spinning thing. I'm with Tommy. I can do well, anything but spinning. I thought this is a Ferris wheel. Fuck, I go on Ferris wheels yeah. all the time. This, you know, okay, it's tall and it might be a little afraid of height feeling, but we get, we run in, we grab the shortest line and we get into the car. And then as it's going, we're looking at the signs and it's like, this is the line over here for the non swinging cars you are in the line for the swinging cars i'm like i don't know what that means maybe you know all what cars do a little bit of this you know 
And then I'm sit, I guess, swear to God, I'm sitting in this car and I'm looking down to the left of me. And there's a whole stack of barf bags, just like on an airplane. There's just like a, there's just an area built that holds barf bags. I'm like, fuck, do they need barf bags? What kind of pussy wheel needs for? that? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> so we start, we start going and it's fine and it's fine. It's fine. And then you get up to a certain point and these cars that that slide and move are on a separate almost like roller coaster track built into the ferris wheel so when you get up to a certain height the car goes boom and comes back down and starts really dramatically swinging so you kind of get a little bit of a roller coaster and you get a little bit of a spinning feel on it and i swear to god all three of us in the in the car were like what the fuck is going on here I mean, you had no idea. We didn't expect this at all. We were like, what the fuck? And then, I mean, we're not talking little. We're talking like. <sighs> and, and I'm immediately like, whoa, stomach got a little like airdrop there. And OK, so then we move up a little higher and then it hits another round of tracks and goes. Boom, boom. And I'm like. I'm the kind of pussy that needs that bag. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I'm not feeling good. I'm telling, I'm telling Katrina, and I'm telling to I'm like, I'm not feeling good. I'm like, I'm closing my eyes. I'm trying to mentally block out everything, trying to settle it down. And you know, we go around one loop, and I'm like, if we go around this loop one more time, I'm puking. Just telling you right now, we do this a second time, I'm puking. Well. They gave us two loops around because there wasn't people in line. So we come around the second time. And I'm just like. And those are the pictures I posted and I sent everybody. I'm like, and thank God we did this at like eight in the morning. I hadn't had breakfast yet. So yeah. completely empty stomach. But it was just like 15 minutes of dry heaving i was just like oh, 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 oh that's oh, brutal oh, like looking oh, crappy and Tuli's a little a little, a little spits coming up and Tuli's like you saw the picture she's looking at me like yeah and i, I i'm I, I i i'm like i go to katrina who's sitting on the opposite opposite side i'm like get your camera out you gotta take a picture of this <laughs> i'm like you gotta, you gotta take pictures of me i'm puking on a ferris wheel Oh, that's that, that, just that that whole act of I have not thrown up in years. That is just the worst. Oh, oh it's the worst. It's like I knew it was, you know, that first loop around. I'm like, I think I can manage this. I think I can manage this. I think I can manage this. But it's like, OK, if we do this for another 10 minutes, I'm not going to be able to hold this down because I know what the fuck is coming again. Right. There's only two. There's only two Ferris wheels like this in the world. One at Disney. And the one at Coney Island, Lisa just got here. Let me admit her okay. to this so she can get in on this fun story. Because Lisa was cracking up when I said I was telling so Coney messaging. Island, so the, Warriors, uh, the Warriors turf at Coney Island. Lisa, Lisa, we're recording and I'm in the midst of my puking on a Ferris wheel story. Oh, my God. Can you guys Where's hear me she? okay? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Can Are you in the just... lobby? I am. And if nice. anyone... And if anybody remembers this hotel, they will remember this lobby very, this was the site of the Indie Expo, was it the, the anniversary one? Seven, that was, the, was that when we had Eric's birthday there? Was that the two-day event? Well, there was Eric's birthday, it was his 60th birthday. I think we did have it here. Or do we have yeah, to because help? then the one in 2018, because I didn't go to the one in 18, which was, I think, his last one. The last, which one was the Bob incident? That was 17. That was yeah. Eric's birthday. Yeah, that was right here. If you can't, there's, there's the, there's the spot right where it happened. <laughs> uh, yep, I, I remember that well. I remember <laughs> that well. Um, so, so at least I'm just, we just literally got started and I was just explaining to everybody why I wasn't there last week. Cause I was on literally a Ferris wheel and I puked my guts out people, but I was, I'm explaining to these guys how this is just like, it's like a Ferris wheel with little like roller coaster 
that the cars are because they literally are on separate tracks inside the roller coaster. That's what I said. I said it looked like it, a it looked like a roller coaster within a Ferris wheel. Like you didn't it, 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 it was it was it was just like that. And and I was just saying there's only two Ferris wheels in the world just like this. Disneyland and Coney Island. And when we got home from Disney, I I was going on YouTube. I'm like, I can't be the only but only person who got fucking sick on this thing. Let me see. And there's just videos after videos, just like me, where people are like, what the fuck is going on? They they nickname it literally Mickey's Wheel of Terror. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It it has been. In Disneyland, it has been voted the number one scariest ride in Disneyland. A fucking Ferris wheel. Really? Jesus. <laughs> I want to go ride it now because now it's my interest. Oh, Lisa, by the way, I can. I love that you're repping my hometown there today. That's it. Detroit That's Rock it. City. Nice. Nice. So anyway, everybody, that's where I was last week when these guys were off recording on their own. I was... I, I got off. I got off that Ferris wheel, and you know, surprising me that they had barf bags in every car on a Ferris wheel was also like, what the fuck do you need barf bags? But then, as you get off, there's literally a garbage can right there as you step off of the Ferris wheel for you to deposit your barf bags in. <laughs> nice. I was just like, okay, at least I'm not the only one because I found so many videos of people like just like shocked and scared and just like what the fuck is going on on this ferris well, wheel the video you shared if you watch it, it is hysterical the one girl like freaks out like yeah their life and stuff oh my jesus but the, well the the other thing that that all three of us katrina myself and Tuli, were like so the car is swinging and moving there's no handrails or holding anything you can hold on to inside the car except the, the mesh the mesh Except the mesh, thing. you stick your fingers into that that grid mesh, and you're like, <laughs> "Did did you pull a George <laughs> Jetson? Did you go, Jane, get me off this crazy thing?" <laughs> <laughs> Katrina took if, video. I want to know if Katrina took video. No video. It it, it took everything I had in mid puke to go. Katrina, <laughs> take photos, take pictures of me. Because <laughs> because it had all the puking had already started. And I'm just like, oh, you've got to take pictures of this because people are going to love this online. I mean, this is this is the world we live in. You're puking your guts in Disneyland in a Ferris wheel. And it's like, stop. you got to take pictures to document this. Why would you? And, and T- Tuli is just laughing at me like, Why? she went to school this week, first, first day back at school. And she's telling all of her friends that her daddy puked on a Ferris wheel. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the stories when they go by. It's like, what you do in spring break? Well. I went to Disneyland and my dad puked on the Ferris wheel. Oh, that, that's, a, I'm, I'm, a, a, all I was thinking is Disney. It's a place where memories are made. I'm like, I fucking made a memory that's going to last a lifetime for Tuli. All, all of her classmates are like, he puked on a Ferris wheel. He, what a fucking wuss. He puked on a little Ferris wheel. It's like, yeah, I challenge, I challenge anybody to get on that Ferris wheel and not go, what the fuck? Fuck, what's going on here? Mike, Mike, wait for her. Wait for her when they have bring parents career day. One guy's gonna be, I'm a policeman. Oh, my my dad's a fireman. My dad's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> my dad pukes on a Ferris wheel. I'll be like, isn't your dad is that the one that puked? You know, Michael, that's gonna be like, you know, that's gonna be oh my god, it was I honest to God, it was so I felt miserable as it was happening because I was telling these oh, I guys I, I hadn't had breakfast yet. So it was literally it was at eight. It was eight in the morning. So it was just dry heaves. But still, any everybody who's had dry heaves know that that's just as painful. It's just like, uh, OK, my my stomach is up in my throat and refuses to go back down. <laughs> so, so the first homework question would be is who else has puked on a ride? Well, more specifically. Oh who has yeah. gone on Mickey Mouse's Wheel of Terror at Disney California Adventure? And do you agree that thing is not just a nice, gentle little Ferris wheel? Of course, it is if you get in the line for the cars that don't swing. There's two lines. 
well, you didn't say that was an option, Michael. Why didn't you go? For we that? didn't know it was an option. We we got it's a Ferris wheel. Who thinks there's gonna be terror on a Ferris wheel anywhere? Yeah, that's you like know, the, we, that's we, the we, biggest ride, calmest ride there is. I mean, a Ferris yeah. wheel. Yeah, exactly. That is the the easiest, calmest ride. So we when we got there, as I was telling these guys, there was no line. So we just ran down. There was no line. We got walked okay. right into the car. We got in the car. And as the car's starting to move, I'm like, there's a second line over there that says non-swinging cars. I wonder what that means. This must be a swinging car, but hell, I mean, all Ferris wheel cars swing a little yeah, bit. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, this was one where it was just like, literally, it was like, gets to a certain height and it's on its separate track inside the wheel and it just went whoosh and then back and i mean awesome. we're oh, it was it was like a little mini roller coaster built into the ferris wheel That's and cool. there was no advance warning of this i mean it, it literally all three of us were sitting there going what the fuck is happening with this car what is going on we had no idea oh my god that's funny Oh, uh, so, oh, uh, yeah, memories, memories, memories. So that's where I was last week. These guys held down the fort. Tommy's got no comments to read because who would have expected him to have any well. comments to read? You're not feeling well. Is that true? It's true. Okay. I feel you better like today. But... You like the Unabomber right now. But... Yeah, it's not been good. So, and, and actually, we delayed this recording. This is on a Thursday. We decided instead of recording like we normally would on Tuesday, let's do it on Thursday because there might be some kiss news for us to talk about. Just maybe. Just a little bit. Just a little bit happened yesterday. So that's what we're here to talk about is the big, well, we could, is it, it was it a big, big event going on Howard Stern? Was it, what, let, let me throw this as the first question out to you guys. For something as big as announcing the final two shows of the final KISS tour, and those are the words KISS uses on, just we'll come back to that at a later point. Don't you kind of feel like it should have been a bigger event than just let's go on Howard Stern and say, yeah, we're playing December 1st and 2nd at Madison Square Garden? Well, I thought I wanted- it was odd that they chose Howard Stern. I wanted to know what day and what aircraft carrier, carrier. because that's yeah. somewhere it, it kind of lo- got lost in transition there. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you too, Lisa. It's like, okay, I understand Howard Stern's a big, big show. He's a big media personality. I didn't listen to it. I don't subscribe to Sirius XM. Oh, I joined well, for the free trials. I, but- I, 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 I will tell you, but hold on. Let, let's, Howard Stern in 2023 does not have the reach that Howard Stern had in 1996. Not at all. Not even close. I thought I couldn't believe. Obviously, I think this is just my opinion. The powers that be just associate so much Howard Stern with New York City that that's why they went with it. But I, I put it this way. Kiss is done dancing with the stars and America's got talent. And I get all that. They did those because those shows had huge ratings. Right. It's not that that's where they thought, Hey, this is our target audience per se, but they're like, Hey, somebody's mom or sister is going to go, Hey, don't you like kiss? I mean, there's enough of that. I don't to announce this on Howard Stern, just to me as a kiss fan, and as someone who understands basic music marketing, made zero sense. I, I agree. It just felt a bit anticlimactic to me. I mean, I it's use like, that exact word, Mike. I wh- use that exact word earlier. I mean, today. you know, Kiss is known for at any point in time for any reason to put on their own press conference somewhere, whether it's on an aircraft carrier or at Men's Chinese Theater or in Australia or whatever. They do their own press conference and they make a big deal out of it. I felt like this wasn't okay. I, I, you know, make an announcement on Howard is one thing, but this was a pretty big announcement. Let's be clear here. I mean, this is basically the end of kiss as a touring band. And, you know, there was, 
it was just sort of like, yeah, let's just go on to a morning show and we'll tell them that. And Do you think that done. there could be a tie, like a, uh, like a cross promotion with Sirius XM? I don't and they know. They announced it yet. Maybe it's a sponsor. Maybe it's a. Uh, well, they I mean, launched. Do you remember in the past they launched Kiss Radio? Yeah. yeah. Make nothing. I mean, nothing. I don't know if they're going to do it once the tour starts, but wouldn't you think they want to hype the when the tour? T- the tickets go on sale in like a week. It goes on Monday, it, don't they? Pre sale or something? I'm just saying, though, to general oh, public, yeah. I think right. it's a week. A matter of fact, because I went on Kiss Online today, and I think there's a countdown for seven days. So to the general public, a week now is the time. Again, basic marketing would tell you now's the time to hype, 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 hype. Or they should have hyped, hyped, hyped a couple of like when it was first announced. Like Kiss is going to be on Howard Stern to make a big announcement. Then I would have started the marketing. That's enough. Lisa, boom. Did we really hear anything about Howard Stern and Kit? It everyone was like, is that did you? Did you hear about that? It wasn't a huge announcement. Uh-uh. And 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 listen, there's a lot of people who are like, over the years, hasn't Howard made a lot of fun of Kiss? Isn't he kind of that's, that's why I said, that's why, 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 why would they why go why would started. they go somewhere on a guy who now granted Howard's gonna play nice because he knows this is good for him and everything else, but yeah, I just feel like this almost felt like you know, sort of an afterthought of, oh, holy shit, we got to make this announcement next week and we haven't planned anything. What can we do? Well, let's call Howard. Let's see if we can get on that morning show. It's too late to get on. I mean, Good Morning America would have been a bigger event, a bigger reveal. The Today Show, anything like that. That's not the more, that's, would that be the demographic though? But but like I said, your your grandma or your aunt or somebody's going to go, hey, Billy, I Kiss was on. I heard their, my, my point is today's show is going to reach millions and millions and millions, whereas Stern's more you know, as you to subscribe and all that other Stern, stuff. A, you're not, again, a, you have to subscribe. You have to it's subscribe. Right I, I, I am a huge Kiss fan. I don't subscribe to Sirius XM. I did not hear it. I just wa- I just watched the little video clips that were posted, the press release that Kiss put out. That's where I'm getting everything from. How many people? subscribe to Sirius XM. And, and if I remember, you could subscribe to Sirius XM for music, but you might have to pay more to get Howard Stern on top of that. Well, well it's I, funny. I did the free trial. I did the free trial. Just they should have gone on Gutfeld. He's got the biggest audience right now. On who? who? Gutfeld. On Who's Fox, at the late night he's, guy. He's oh, oh. crushing Fallon and all those other guys. Well, that would have been that's nice just it, it, Tommy. Go where the numbers are. You that's know what it. I mean? Why My understanding you, is he's... Jimmy Fallon show in New York. I don't know. I mean, you know, remember, Kiss is all... In, in For recent years, Kiss is all about bigger, bigger, bigger. They don't care. They want to be bigger than anything else. And Howard Stern is not bigger than everything else out there. Howard Stern is not something no other band has done. That's an easy win for them. I mean, literally an easy pick up the phone. Hey, Howard, Kiss wants to come on the show. Of course. When do you want it? Done. I mean, yeah, there would have been much bigger outlets that would have made a bigger splash. Hold on, Michael. Let's dissect what you just said in in a way. Howard Stern. What is Howard's history with Kiss? It's not good. Mm -mm. He mocked them openly. For years, especially Fred. Fred can't stand it. Well, do you remember when when uh, Craig Gaffs would go on? Yes, yes, yeah. And, uh, and- again, my, my point is how Howard never lifted Kiss up. Like this is a band I like. These are songs I like. This is a band worth checking out. He mocked them. Yeah, he mocked them for years. So that's you, another reason. Why you would listen, you want to go on with him? Did you listen to the interview? No. I listened to the whole thing while waiting for my airplane. I, I, I thought it was great. Oh, he I asked heard that. Of, he asked a lot of great questions. like Not like stupid questions, but like really good. Like, Lisa, my, my point was yeah. leading up to it, though. This was not a friend of the band. No, and I would have never expected him to have those kind of questions either. I was anticipating, you know, like Goofy Howard Stern. You know, like, gee, you mean the stern that was good? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, like, gee, how many girls you sleep with? You know, all that bullshit. But his yeah. question is very, like, thought and very serious and very, you know, a lot. You know, I thought it was, an, I, that's not what I expected. I've I seen like, bits oh, and God. pieces of, I've seen bits and pieces of the interview, and it's like, yeah, these were actually either the questions were very good or finally Gene and Paul's answers were a bit more open and revealing and honest to the, the questions, but right. yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. It just, that was one of the things I felt right off the bat and I took some notes and I go, it's a bit anticlimactic for an announcement that is this freaking big. Well, and then when he said it, like, like Howard Stern was like, so when's the next, when's the last show going to be? And Pop was like, well, it's going to be December 1st. And so it was like, so matter of fact, it was like, yeah, right, it's going to be first December 1st and second, just side note, December 2nd is my birthday, by the way. We know. So if somebody we wants to get Lisa there. a birthday present, buy her tickets. I mean, what, I mean, really, could, could that, could, could all the planets line up any better? I mean, really, it was like, it was meant for me. Just saying. <laughs> so, so beyond the Howard Stern aspect of this, yeah, I mean, this was the announcement again using Kiss's own words. This is the final shows of the final tour. That's how it was worded in the post that Kiss made on their website, on their social media. That's the press release. So. I, I, I guess let's just jump right into the to the, the the big thing. Are these the final shows ever? Does anybody here think these are the final shows ever? Because again, oh. that's not how they worded it. Somebody asked me that, and I jumped in immediately and said yes. And then when I thought about it, I th- I I was thinking of the question: Is is this going to be the final show ever? And I'm like, yep. And then I was like, well, I should have prefaced that by saying probably the final show with them in makeup with a full flown show like that because well, lisa they've already said they're going to play on the cruise so yeah, well, they already yeah they already are but it's still playing they're, they're still, still playing so i mean music. that's the point i wanted to make is like final show ever implies never playing ever again as kiss right and i should have said and i should have read that and said well possibly the final show in makeup in that kind of realm but not the final show that we're ever going to see from them well i i i I think their own words describe it it's the final show of the final tour and if if anybody's been paying attention since the end of the road tour began both Gene and Paul have mentioned in interviews on more than one occasion that the end of the road doesn't mean the end of kiss, that the kiss will still continue and that the opportunities to do one-off shows and residencies still exist. It just means it's the end of kiss mounting a big world tour going on the road for six months, 12 months. That's done and over. They're not doing that. So if they do a residency, I could see them still doing a residency with a production and in makeup. That's not a tour. That's every band out there lives to do residencies these days. Yeah. Because they're 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 so easy on the artists. You do 12 shows, 36 shows, whatever it might be in one venue, you set up your stage. It never gets taken down for the next three months. And guess what? You are given suites in that hotel. And in the case of kiss, they can do like four shows. This is like what they did on their first Vegas residency. They would do their four shows and then they'd all jump in their private jet and fly home to LA and spend three days with their family and then fly back to Vegas and stay in a suite. That's easy. That's not travel. That's not on the road. That's not customs. That's not borders. That's none of that shit. It's easy on cruise. You don't have a crew that's traveling city to city. Um, so I, I kind of feel like 
based on what they've already said all along for the last few years, there are going to be more shows. We actually know they're going to do the sail away show on the next kiss cruise next year. So right there, there's already a show. There's already a show that's been planned. So I think it's, to say these are the final shows ever, I think that is media trying to create an exciting headline that people will click. Because if you look carefully at the press release and the message KISS put out, it doesn't say anywhere final shows ever. I just think they're going to be lumped in, and that's what Howard Stern said. He said, you know, is this really the last show, or are you, are you going to be falling into that to that? I guess, verbiage where people say it's the last show and they continue it on for like seven more years. And Paul said, well, you know, he said, we were, we were supposed to end this years ago. He goes, but COVID hit and it messed everything up. We were supposed to be go- done two years ago. And he goes, I'm 70 years old. I can't keep doing this anymore. He goes through like all of his like hip replacements and all of his surgeries that he had. It's like it's, it's physically, he just, he, his body just can't do it. Um, but I mean, if they're going to do that, I, I mean, I think it's stupid if they say it and then they come back and do something else because it, it makes them look like the boy that cried. You know yeah, but saying? but I, I get what you're saying. But I guess what I'm saying is if you look at what Kiss said, they aren't saying these are the final shows. It's other people that are implying and thinking it means it's the final shows. Now, yeah, Gene and Paul aren't jumping in and correcting everybody who's making that assumption. Because obviously it helps sell tickets if everybody thinks it's the absolute final. But pay attention to what they've said over the last few years in interviews during the end of the road tour and pay attention to what's in the press release. And I don't think for a second it's the final shows. And I wouldn't get mad at them if they all of a sudden came back and did a two-week Vegas residency because they said all along that could be possible. They said they were going to do one anyway. And then they had to cancel it, remember? Yeah, so they already, like, yeah, they, they had they had a Vegas residency last year that yeah. they had to postpone. Yeah. Well, it was like what they said before, you know, this is the last Pittsburgh date. And they went and did another show. This is the last Atlanta date. They did another show. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I And we talked about that before, remember? It, is yep. it like upsetting that you, you went thinking it was the last show and they had another date? Upsetting. You know? I mean, I I, I think regardless of what we just were trying to explain here, whenever they play another show, of course, there's going to be people that are going to be up in arms, accusing them of lying. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is. If you paid attention to the last few years and you read what was written, stop believing the blabbermouth headline that blabbermouth writes course they're going to play more shows they've said they they could be playing more shows they've That's always fine. said that let them play i don't care they, yeah i mean I, I i'm i'm not i'm not upset by that i mean i i'm telling people i'm like uh i'm not gonna bust my ass to get a ticket and get out to new york city for these two shows yeah, because no. frankly i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for the vegas residency which do i know is gonna happen not at all but i'm counting i'm knocking on wood that there's probably a it's probably already in the books and they're just waiting for whenever it to be announced. But uh, Tommy and Mark, are you guys going to the New York shows? Planning on yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Def- I'm definitely, I have to go for I have to go to December 2nd. It's just. Lisa, Liz and I and Tommy are going to take you off for your birthday. Yeah. Are you kidding? That, that, I I like it. Mark, Mark and Tommy are going to make a sandwich for you. <laughs> and Liz too. <laughs> Liz too. You know, it's funny because Brian says Brian's like, yeah, this is great. Was it this morning or yesterday? He goes, "You're planning on going to that show, aren't you?" I was like, "Uh, yeah." It's you, know how, you know how great it is for me. As soon as Liz says, like, "She's go like, we're going right," I'm like, "Fucking a right, we're going." <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, she just, loves going. To, she loves going yeah. to New York anyway. So we'll take Plus, you, we'll know, take I get you out to dinner, like to Katz's Deli or something. What, take me to Casa Deli? 
Yeah, or to like Chinese food or whatever you want. I or think you know what going to be? We have to if, coordinate that. If yeah. Izzy joins us, we can go to 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's funny, not to get off subject, but I, 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 uh, I'm going to Vegas in August. And Planning I'm, your date with him? Yes, absolutely. Izzy's so nice. Ask him to Pretty introduce zone. you to his new girlfriend. <laughs> I got to meet a new girlfriend. Where, where yeah, at, what supermarket? <laughs> I, yeah, that's the point. Ask him to take you to the supermarket to meet his girlfriend. I'll get a yeah. picture. Hopefully, he won't introduce you to the rubber one that has the semen collection tray. God. Anyway, so um, I, I, I have not. I like I said, I did not listen to this thing live. I have read clips highlights things um that i've seen online and correct me lisa if i'm wrong did they bring up any past members i can't honestly i cannot remember because there was a point where i was checking out and i missed a little so it might have been when i missed a little i don't recall I i know what you're referring to I haven't seen any comments online by anybody who said, oh, my God, Gene or Paul talked about Ace or Peter. So I'm assuming it was never brought up. When you when you go, I gave you guys things in the chat. It, it, the, the whole Howard Stern show is three hours on because it's it's a whole show for that day. Skip ahead to the last hour. And that's the kiss part. So don't sit through the whole two hours like I did going, am I going to sit through this whole damn thing? And then I was like, oh. Fast forward, it says kiss on. So, so I, I, it's only an hour. I guess to, to, to what Mark is bringing up, we still don't know if Ace and or Peter or Bruce oh, are going to be. You thought it was what? Nothing. I thought it was something else. Um, we don't know if any of those guys are going to be part of the last show, last two shows, last run of dates. Um, I haven't seen anything to say it's confirmed. We've seen recent interviews where Gene's like, we've been talking. We want them to be there. We've tried everything we can. I think that's kind of where it's at right now. We'll, I mean, I suppose it could be a complete surprise. Well, but, but if again, let's go back to sane kiss, meaning the kiss hype machine. The thing that KISS does arguably better than most, you know, to as people think, um, if they were going to bring Peter and Ace out for sure, if this was all in stone, don't you think we'd know about it? Yeah, I don't. I think they'd be the first one screaming, it's done. They're going to be there. You don't want to miss these shows. They're not going to do it until the very, until like the last minute. But Lisa, again, if you're going to hype the, keep in mind, they've got tickets to sell throughout Canada. They've got tickets to sell, you know, throughout the world. They've got tickets to sell. You're going to want to get as many clicks as possible. And if they mentioned Ace and Peter joining them, that's clickbait. That's major clickbait. Um, And again, do I think they're going to? Yeah, it just, to me, that just, They've got to be involved. Again, that's... Something's going to happen. Yeah. That that would be conventional wisdom, wouldn't it? That they're yeah. going to join them. Well, that's, what, but, that's what in the, in, the, in, the, in the world that we want to happen. But you know all that bullshit in the back, all the lawyers... Well, the no, but, 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 but to, Mark, to Mark's point, Lisa, I, yeah, that's what we want to happen. But I also believe something's going to happen. Uh, do I do I believe Ace and Peter are going to show up in makeup and costume? No. Not at all. Not at all. Do I think they're going to be there in some capacity? Yeah, I do. I think there's going to be, you know, Peter coming out. Again, Peter comes out and sings Beth. Ace Fraley's playing, you know, shock me or new york groove or something like that and then you know there everybody's up there for rock and roll all night is the last the last one they aren't going to be bruce. in makeup I, I could see with bruce, bruce. Uh, yeah. yeah 
So there's, only one, that, there's only one person, and we're not going to mention his name, no. who I think is not going to be. And I got to tell you, as a fan, I, I wish. I, I, but you know what? I, I, I get it. I totally, I totally, I would love to see Loretta join them, you know, just as a take a bow. I mean, for her brother. I, I'm talking about the very last show. Right. I, 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 I think I, that very last show should have Wicked Lester members. Anybody who was ever involved in that band at some point in time, I think it should be, you know, on the stage for that last song. Not only band members, but I think it should be past crew members. I, I think every single person ever worked on a Kiss show, anytime Kiss related, I thing, think the last. Should be I, there. Think, I think like the last. Two, well, you know, like, or, or, or maybe the last two shows could have Bruce and his band playing all the non non makeup and deep tracks as the opener that'd be great i that would I, be great. See that you know. i don't see that but that would be very cool i mean you know first thing to check is what's does grand funk railroad have shows on december 1st exactly and 2nd i was just gonna look at right yeah. now. Well, just, i mean i you know i i was commenting with one fan who's like gene and paul have to get bruce to open these last 50 shows i'm like you're assuming that Bruce is doing nothing. He's like full time Grand Funk Railroad touring. He's booked solid. He's playing in Georgia. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So when you go on Grand Funk site, it says December 2nd, 2023, to be announced in New Jersey. Mm. So Bruce is going to be in the New York area already. Will be nearby. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, I I think something's going to happen. I don't yep. think we're going to actually know the full details of what will happen until either Kiss announces it or it happens on stage. Right. Yeah. But you would th- you would think though that again they're going to try and get clicks. You know what I mean? I I was supr- put it this way: if it was imminent, I think they would have hyped that. And right. I, I was talking to a friend earlier today, and we were just kind of kicking an eye something. Kiss, or excuse me, Ace was just in California, in the Los Angeles area. Whiskey, literally. Yeah, literally playing a show show 20 minutes from where Gene and Paul live. They didn't visit him. They, Do we know they, that have the, they have in the past, you know what I mean, came out and said hi, you know. I I would have thought that, put it this way, if if Ace and Peter were imminent, they would have done something to hype it. Like, go visit ace or bring it up yeah I, it's just to me it's very unkiss like it's so it, low key it, 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 you, you're, you're you're right it's been very low key although what what i will i will add is i don't think these last two shows i can't speak to all the other shows that leading up to it but these last two shows at the madison at madison square garden aren't going to need any help whatsoever selling tickets. Meaning they don't need to get Ace and Peter committed, announced to help sell out Madison Square Garden. I, opening for them and nobody, people would still sell out. What was that? They could have Bozo the Clown opening for them. And well, yeah, I mean, I mean, this also leads to some fans are like, well, Kiss really should put an, a, a good opening band on at this point for these last shows. I'm like, why? They don't need opening bands traditionally are put on to help sell tickets. That's what they're for. Not just for the love of it. It's like we need an opening act to help us sell tickets. Kiss has proven on the end of the road tour. They don't need help selling tickets. And add to that the, the hype these final two shows are going to get. They aren't going to need any help selling those two shows out. So 
to some extent, that tells me Gene and Paul don't need to bend over backwards to really try and get Ace and Peter on the dotted line in advance because these shows are going to do just fine without them. And if Ace and Peter agree to show up for reasonable terms, we would love to have them there. But we don't need them for the reason to sell tickets. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and the whole Howard Stern thing may have just literally been enough to do what they need to have done. You know, we're oh. all th- saying maybe we need, they need, you know, more hype or this or that, but it may, these may sell themselves. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, I posted on our socials, um, either was it yesterday or today? I can't even remember StubHub, which is a ticket reseller and granted yeah. tickets haven't even gone on sale, but this is typical for resellers like main floor row B seats for the final last night, December 2nd, StubHub already has tickets for over $6,000 a ticket on there. They're anticipating the demand. Who's going to buy that? I think, I don't think that's a question of who it's somebody will. Somebody will who thinks this is the absolute last opportunity. Money's not an issue for them. They want to be down front. They'll spend the money. But what I guess what I'm getting at is StubHub, who has pretty good understanding for ticket demand, sees that this show is going to be in big demand. There's going to be a lot of demand for aftermarket secondary tickets. Now, Madison Square Garden's not selling the ticket for $6,000. Kiss isn't. This is a, a reseller who is going to get tickets and is just anticipating that they'll be able to immediately sell them for this much money because there'll be so much demand. Mike, let's, let's use an example that's tried and true when we look at the ticket prices because it's what the Rolling Stones did. The Rolling Stones amped up their ticket prices years ago for the main floor tickets. And I remember people going, I'm not paying four or $500 for a ticket. And the Rolling Stones, you know, obviously they didn't say, but I, I, this is something I read. I don't know if it was Rolling Stone or wherever, but the, the band management went, the reason ticket prices are so high is these are the prices that they're getting in the aftermarket. And the band should get that money, not put it this way. If 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 the after or if the if the aftermarket was five hundred dollars a ticket, I'm just using easy numbers to understand. The Rolling Stones went, we just did our last tour. We noticed that all the main floor tickets were five hundred dollars when we were selling them for two hundred dollars each. Well, why should these bastards get the other? The market is saying it'll sell for five hundred. Yep. Why should we give them over double what we're making? So tell you what, we're going to try and kill the aftermarket by charging what the aftermarket and by and large, it worked. They were selling because I remember wanting to go to one of the Comerica shows. And that's when I started doing a little bit of homework. And I'm like, main floor for whatever it was, $375. And that's when I kind of went, got wise. I'm like, that's what they're doing because that's what they went for last time. When when I did the KISS VIPs back in 2003, that was part of the logic behind charging $1,000 was on the, on the reunion tour, fans were paying $750 to scalpers to get a ticket in the front row. Face value of that ticket was 40, 50 bucks. That's what KISS got. $700 on top of that went to the scalper. So the market was able to support demand for 750. I threw in, you know, meet the band and all this other stuff. And it's like, okay, it's worth a thousand dollars. Now the band is making that money, right. not the scalper. So yeah, I, I mean, and I, I don't, you guys remember way back in ye olden days when the Eagles were the first band to crack a hundred dollars for a concert ticket and the uproar yeah. that brought in. Oh my God, the Eagles are charging a hundred dollars. Nobody's going to pay for that. So again, getting back to, I think, I think it's pretty reasonable and safe to say 
these last two shows, there's going to be huge demand. They're going to sell out really quickly. The aftermarket is going to explode. Whether they sell it is another thing, but that's not on the band to worry about. That's on the scalper who bought the ticket for face value, who may get stuck with that ticket if they can't sell it for $6,000. They're going to be out there the night of the show going, got two tickets, 100 bucks. Who wants it? I need some money for it. You know, yeah. I, 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 I don't think Kiss needs Ace and Peter to help sell tickets. They've proven that they don't. They've proven it on this tour. Yeah. They've proven it. So, but, but still you wonder why is, is anything happening there? Is it, I mean, are they just not going to do anything? And it's just, you know, nobody else shows up. It's kids doing, well, let's bring, let's, let's move the discussion this way. Do you think other than potential other members showing up is the set list, is the show going to change at all for these final two shows? No, I'd like to think so, but I, well, I don't think it will for the same reasons that Paul talks about uh, whenever he talks uh, about the show in general, it's all core. And we know that it's all choreographed time to the lighting time to the pyro. I, they're not going to go off script. I don't think they will. I mean, do I hope so? But also, though, too, what's going to be in it for them? I mean, I think they're just going to put on just a great show. I think it's going to be a very emotional show. I think uh, Gene has said over and over and over he's going to need yep. a diaper on his face. And I look, nobody lives and breathes Kiss quite like Gene does emotionally. Whereas, let's face it, Paul's sort of running everything. But Gene... I think I think this is going to affect Gene the most. Yeah, out of I agree. All four of them. I agree. I think I think you're right. I mean, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a very emotional show. I don't see the set list changing. I don't see them digging deep cuts. Why would I don't they? Think, why would they? I, you know, somebody's like, well, how how about playing for two hours, two and a half hours? I'm like, no, they're not going to extend the show. Not, I, you I, know, so, somebody else was like, they need they need to change the stage show. I'm like, why would they? What a, after after this entire tour since 29th end of 2019 was it the end of 2019 beginning of 2019 when this started the beginning of 2019 remember. beginning yeah. of 2019. Yeah. Why for the last two shows of the tour would they go and make the expense of building a whole new stage show and a whole new production? They're not. I mean. I, I don't, I don't think they will. They could surprise us. They really could surprise us and do more pyro and different video stuff. But I, I don't I don't see a whole new stage. I don't see a oh. ch dramatically changed set list. I don't see a they longer won't have time. show. They're, they're playing in fucking, what, Baltimore the night before two days or a day before or something. Yeah, the reason I, I want to go is just I want to be a part of it in the same way you would go to a Super Bowl to see your team. I just want to be a part of the experience. I don't care what they do. I don't care if if they bring out past members. I don't care if they change the set. It's for me. It's not about that. It's more about just being with my friends, the tribe. You know, yeah, being being with you know you and Liz and and hopefully Lisa's going to come out. I just want to be with you guys and hang out. That that's what it's about. It's it's a celebration of something that we all care about. Yeah, I don't care. The rest of it, the, the concert's almost secondary. And it's my birthday. Well, and it's Lisa's <laughs> birthday, yeah. <laughs> that has been noted. The yeah, it, it's been mentioned a couple times, hasn't it? Yeah. I yeah. can mention it for the rest of the year, damn it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, great. So, so I, I mean, and, and let's, be, let's be crystal clear. None of us, including Mark, have any inside information about what's happening, what's going to happen, what could happen, what are they talking about? It? We know as much as everybody else knows by reading what's going on. Correct. And if you want tickets, talk to Damone. Yeah. Talk to Damone. <laughs> yeah, please. I mean, look, listen, I think, it, I think it's pretty safe to assume, and I've seen this for many of the artists I've worked with, a tour of this level, shows of this level, there are going to be no comp tickets to anybody, people. 
None. They don't need to comp tickets for this show. They're going to sell every available seat they can. So don't ask Tommy, Mark, Lisa, or myself if we can help get you tickets because it's it's not happening. Plus, we couldn't anyway. We never could. Yeah, so. we, we, it's, yeah. And, 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 and my camera bag is not heavy enough that I need someone to carry it for. So thank you. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to just see the end of the road show that we've seen. Maybe there'll be a few little smaller things, like you said, Tommy, more pyro, um, maybe more, more emotional stage wraps between songs, potentially. Do, um, like, a montage, you know? y- yeah, I mean, maybe they'll change up some of the video stuff a little bit. You're not going to, I I don't think you're going to get a whole new show, a whole new set list, a longer show. I don't think any of that is going to happen. And, and I guess I say that by don't build up hopes that you think it's going to be, and then get all disappointed when it doesn't happen. Expect what we've seen for the last, since 2019, since this tour started, expect that. And if anything changes, then you get happy because you weren't expecting it. Right. There's no right. letdown that way. You don't get let down by you being the only person who builds up all this hope that, oh, my God, Vinny's going to be there and they're going to add a whole Ooh. bunch of songs from Creatures and Lick It Up and oh, Bruce God. is going to be there and they're going to play song from every album during the eight. It's, 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 no, it's not happening. It's, I, it's not going to happen. They might do yeah. crazy nights. What? They might do crazy nights. Well, only might only because they have rotated that in and out occasionally from that's their set list. Yeah, but possibly. but don't 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 expect anything dramatically different than what you've seen since the start of this tour. Right. Um, do you guys? I mean, this is kind of a uh, stupid question about Kiss, but do you imagine they're going to record film this show? Or these shows for a DVD streaming live album type of Are release? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Well, okay. So, They're so, hire so the then, Dubai guys. Well, so yeah, Ooh. I was just going to follow up. What release will you get first? The final shows at Madison Square Garden or the Dubai show? What will arrive first? Well, we know it won't be magic. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna jump off this one and go on and, and join on my phone once it's charged because I have to go to dinner. So I'll okay. come in a second. Well, let's wrap this up anyways because we've been at it for. Yeah, I think hour. we're I think we're kind of at the end. So yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the other thing a lot of people ask is, do you think they're going to record it? Of course, it's fucking Kiss. Of course, yeah. they're going to record and sell something of this to what we don't know. Right. Um. So Earth, I guess, you know, posters, pins, you name it. Oh, God, there's going to be there's going to be such a crap. line of customized merchandise for these last two shows that, you know, they'll break the bank buying every version of event posters and event shirts and hats and pins and buttons and keychains and signed lithographs and Vinyl. Uh, all, all of that. So um, I guess homework would be based on everything we've just talked about. Ooh, look at Lisa. Whatever, I just changed. Cha cha cha. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Campbell soup, um, baby. <laughs> homework is what do you think? What is what do you you know? Not what you wish. What do you realistically think is going to happen? Yeah, I I, I don't want to hear. I want, uh, you know, I really want Vinnie Vincent to show up. Let's be realistic. We've already. That's not going to happen. I want Ace Frehley in his makeup playing the entire show. That's not going to happen. Right. Peter Chris is not coming there to play the entire show in makeup. Not going to happen. So that's not a homework answer we're looking for. What do you think is going to happen? And do you plan on going to, this my birthday. Yeah. to the last two shows? Are you going to take Lisa out for a birthday drink? And then do you 
think these are the last shows ever? Do you think there's going to be other types of shows? I don't think that we'll ever see another full Kiss major tour, but you know, do you think there could be a Vegas residency? Do you think there could be one-off shows that could be either in makeup or out of makeup? What do you guys think? And have you puked on a ride at Disney World or Disneyland? Yeah, exactly. Have you also been on Mickey's Wheel of Terror at Disney California Adventure? And am I right in saying it was scary as shit? <laughs> see. <it. laughs> see. <laughs> um, all right. That's it. There's your homework. That's the big events in the world of Kiss. We'll see everybody next week. Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-4743. For three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.